Okay, so big welcome to Nika Stewart, who's going to talk to us today about how to start a live streaming show. Um, and I know that we have some people registered here who haven't been to a meeting before, so I know this was a topic that was really appealing. I'm very excited about that. Um, Nika helps women show up and shine as the unique, brilliant superstars they are. She does this through social media trainings, live stream consulting, and done-for-you marketing services. She's got this awesome membership called Shine 365, and it's a vibrant online community of women entrepreneurs that helps members enhance their social media presence and grow their businesses in a fun, supportive environment. And we get to have her here today, so I'm very excited. Um, I am going to turn it over to Nika right now. Um, and Nika, let me ask you, do you want any kind of time check, 15, 10 minutes, anything like that? Um, sure, because I could probably talk for hours about this topic and with all of you. I think I like I I I try to create presentations that are more interactive and less formal. However, the best part of the presentation for me is always when people actually just have questions. So I'm happy if you want to interrupt, if something is confusing or you have a question to clarify something, feel free to either unmute and interrupt me or put in the chat. But if Lisa or Belinda, if you could tell me while I'm presenting, I may not see the chat. So just let me know. Um, we'll I also do that. Sorry. We, we will watch the chat for you. Excellent. So I have a presentation, but I can also, I, like I could stop it and talk with you. We could go back and forth. Um, and uh, I lost my train of thought, but okay. <laughs> I'm excited to talk to you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So as can I can share my screen? Okay. Let's see. And then I will present. All right, so we are gonna talk about having your own, wait, I am, let's get back to Zoom. It's not showing my screen, my screen sharing is paused. Why is that? Hmm, I'm sorry. It's all right. Where is? It looks like, yeah, it looks like it's, uh, oh. I'm gonna stop it and try to st start it again. It Good disappeared. Idea. Hmm. All right, let me escape and try again. Canva isn't showing up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Share. There you go. Do you see Canva? It's not. Mm -hmm. Gosh, my computer keeps going back and forth. I can't see it. Now I can see it. Okay. It's not. <laughs> for me. This is it is disappearing? Weird. If you want to do it in the other mode, that's fine too. Okay. Maybe if I just, do you see Canva? We yes. see Canva. We see Canva, okay. but we can see your slide right in the middle too. Okay, great. Because yeah, it's not, the present mode is not working, if that's okay with you. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. Sure. We can okay. See. So, um, so how to start your own live show for fun and for profit. Does anyone here have do do live streams let's start with just live streaming yes i've seen yours belinda lisa you don't do live streaming and anyway, um, i'm trying to I, I do and then i stop i do and then i stop i do and then i stop so excellent go. great so we're going to talk about the benefit of actually having a consistent schedule so that you consistently do it um because there are a lot of great reasons for that um I need to move things out of the way so that I can get. Okay, so um, okay, so we're going to learn how to start a show, uh, the equipment that you'll need, and the good news is that it's probably a lot less than you think. How to create uh, types of shows you can do. How to create a studio. Really, I call it a studio. It's a dedicated space in your home or your office. And then some ways to feel amazing and confident and comfortable on video and on live streaming. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Nika. Um, I, I think that Lisa explained who I am and what I do. I've had a social media agency for about 11 years. And um, I, about two years ago, I wanted to have something that where I could get a little closer with my clients. So rather than done for you, um, I now work with women 
uh, on their social media. So they're doing it themselves, but I'm working with them to help them grow in a more personalized way. Um, one of the reasons was something, one of the reasons I'm doing this and really stepping into more of what I love is because of something that I went through about a year and a half ago. And I have, I'm wondering if it will show, um, but it's a quick, it's like all about me in 30 seconds or less. <laughs> so let's see if, will this play for you if I click? Let's see. I don't need you to lower the bar for me. I know I'm super warm. I know I'm strong. I know I've got this cause I've had it all along. I'm phenomenal and I'm enough. I don't need you to tell me who to be. So I like to play that because I feel like number one, thank you for the applause. <laughs> number one, uh, the reason I love to uh, go back here. Um, I like to share that because I think in the beginning of a presentation, everyone wants to say, this is who I am. And I like to get that done quickly. And um, one of the things that I do teach my clients is how to create short form content videos, which is the most popular way to get your your brand out there in a huge way. I started doing video, short videos to entertain myself mostly as I was going through chemotherapy. And what happened with those videos was it took my business to a whole new level. My videos went viral. So I started teaching other people how to do it. And it is pretty, pretty awesome the way we can do, um, you know, TikTok is what started it all. And then Instagram said, I want to get in on this. I want, so they, you know, I want what TikTok is doing. So they created Instagram Reels, which really is Instagram's form of TikTok. And then more recently, YouTube came out with what is called YouTube Shorts, and that's their form of TikTok. And Facebook is now doing reels. So all the all the popular networks are doing short form content, which is 60 seconds or under vertical form videos. Um, and so that was one of my popular videos really to explain who I am and my view on life and business. And uh, so that's just a quick who I am. And um, let me get back to this. And let me just see if I could quickly share now or if it won't work. Nope, it won't work for me. <laughs> can we see your slides you do okay but I couldn't see them <laughs> it was just kept disappearing um okay so let's talk about why to do and I thank you for letting me know that was Diana right Diane yes. Yes. thanks um having a show means that you are the host of a show and how cool is it the internet has kind of leveled the playing field for us we can have our own show and be the host of our show. So if you've ever wanted to be Oprah, you now have the ability to, and you have instant credibility and you're sharing your knowledge. And so you're the host of a show and people start to learn to know who you are, what you share, and they start to trust you. Um, what this does is it increases your business opportunities it increases your confidence. And I have to tell you that several times in the last few months, I have gotten business indirectly, not specifically directly from someone coming on my show watching. I, I, I have gotten business from people watching a show and then reaching out and saying, oh, I didn't know you did this. Can I join or can I learn more? Um, and these are things that you can do in your show to get, have calls to action for people to want more from you. So I continue to get cl paying clients that way. But one of the things that I find even more amazing is that the more that I do video, especially live video, the more comfortable I become just really talking to people, improv answering questions. And over the last few months, I have gotten several new large clients who have said, we're hiring you because, you know, we, we asked you questions and you seem to be the one who was most comfortable and you seemed more authentic than the other people we interviewed. And I know that all of this has come from 
getting comfortable on camera. A lot of our sales calls now, when we're working with potential clients, they're on camera rather than in person. And by the way, getting more comfortable on camera gets you more comfortable in person as well. Uh, so raising your confidence increases um, your business opportunities in a big way. Plus it's a ton of fun. So who here wants to start a live show? Give me a yes or a yes queen or a whatever you like, or an amen or a thumbs up. Uh, okay. I see some hands going up. Awesome. Cool. This is what I want to say, because one of the challenges that we run into what that I see so many of us, and I'm speaking of myself as well, when we start something new, especially when it's online and there's some tech involved, and especially if our faces are involved, we spend time in the perfection phase. Like I, I'm going to be ready to launch my live show when I have a nice backdrop, when I have the right clothing, when I lose 10 pounds, when I get my eyelash extensions, when I have a haircut, when I have 20 topics, when I feel more comfortable going live. Number one, good enough is perfect. So you are perfect when it's good enough. Don't wait for perfection for many reasons. Number one, we don't get to perfection, so we don't launch. Number two, done is better than perfect, and people who take action are the ones who are growing their businesses. Number three, here's the coolest thing. When we're on video, Good enough is better than perfect because people can't relate to perfection. And uh, when you look at viral videos and things that are getting really popular out there, most of them are not. I mean, I would say almost all of them are not like Martha Stewart perfection. Like that's not, we can't relate to that. We like the things where people all of a sudden like giggle and they laugh at themselves and they have immense joy and it's like so unprepared. And people who are like, oh my gosh, that, that person is imperfect like me. I, I love, I can relate to them. Um, by the way, I always like to say, when I say imperfect, I, I think that is perfect. And imperfect just means that you don't wait to be all buttoned up and have all the makeup on in your hair. It's just be yourself and be authentic. So can we all agree we're going to do that? Let's be, let's just, let's just be ourselves. Cool. Okay. So what you need to get started with your live streaming show is the desire to do it and a phone or a computer. That's all you need. So you are, if you want to do it, you have the desire and you all, all have a phone or a computer and or a computer. So you all are ready to do a show. However, there are things that you can get to keep improving your show. I just say that all you need is your phone or your computer because it means you're ready to start now. And there's no reason to wait. You can always continually get new apps and new tools. And I'm happy to help you uh, with all of those fun things. If you join my live show every week, I share those things. Like here's a tool that, make, that gives you... Uh, like overlays and videos that come across during your show, your intro video, your outro video, words popping up, all of that is stuff, stuff you can do and it becomes easy, but just get started. So how do we get started? We decide on what is the topic of our show. Then we come up with a title and we come up with a time. Here's something that really helped me. Um, I wanted, I've done live shows for about four or five years now, but about a year and a half ago, I redecided it's time to have something regular and consistent and really grow it. And so I knew that choosing a time was the way to get an audience rather than like, I'm going to go live when I can, I'm going to try to go live once a week. That's fine but we need accountability to ourselves and to our audience for some re several reasons. One is that we are then held accountable. And number two, you're training people to know when the show is. So if Oprah showed up whenever she felt like it, we would not know when to watch. So your show needs to be at, on Tuesdays at two o'clock PM Eastern or whatever you choose. And that is your show. Weekly is best because people are used to seeing it at the same time every week. Um, 
choose a time, put it down in your, in your materials, write it on your website, on your Facebook page, and, and just commit to it so people know to show up. Um, are there any questions on that so far? Let's see, I actually can see the chat in here. Okay, no questions in here. Yes, Belinda. Um, can we talk about, are you gonna talk about length of the show? Sure. Yes. And in fact, I mean, we can talk about that now. So a show, um, when I was talking about short form content for, um, for a moment here uh, before, and short form content is up to 60 seconds. When it comes to live streaming a consistent show, it should absolutely be longer than that. Um, one of the reasons to be longer is that uh, when you start, when you go live, you, you want your audience to know to show up at 2 p.m. because that's when you go live. But not everyone will remember to show up at 2 p.m. And if I'm going live on Facebook, for example, I go live and Facebook takes five to 10 minutes to put it into the notifications if they even choose to do that at all. So, and, and that guideline changes all the time. But five to 10 minutes is a good uh, figure to remember is that, so Facebook is not going to tell your followers and or your connections that you're live for five to 10 minutes. So you can't go live for three minutes and get off and expect that people even, they didn't even know you were live. So five to 10 minutes is minimum, about 20 minutes seems to be the, um, like the sweet spot. So I like to say 20 to 30 minutes because about 20 minutes is when now everyone has been notified that you're on and they have time to get on and see and click over and, and see your show. One other thing, and I have it in my notes, but we can talk about it, is um, a countdown timer. I love having a countdown timer for approximately five minutes at the beginning of my show. So when I say I'm going live, I go live at noon every Friday, noon Eastern. At about three minutes to noon, I put on my five minute countdown timer. So now I, I give Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn where I'm going live on all the places. Um, I give the, the platform five minutes to get me into the notifications. And um, people who do know to show up at noon sometimes are a little late. So it go, the timer goes to about 12.02. And then I start. A countdown timer is great for that reason. It's also great because even after years of pushing that button to go live, I still every time have this feeling. Maybe you can relate. Okay, it's time to go live. Uh, am I, let me look in the mirror. Am I, wait, do I remember what to say? And I don't actually, I, like, and sometimes I, in the past, I have actually just changed my mind. Um, when I have a countdown timer, I put, like, I don't have to worry. I'm not going live yet. I'm just turning on the countdown timer. And now I have five minutes to really get prepared. And then I do things like I check my phone to see if it's actually going live to make sure the sound is on. I check my lipstick in the mirror. I, by the time the five minute countdown, I have no choice. <laughs> like it goes down to zero. I'm live. So I don't ever have the choice to change my mind. So I love a countdown timer and it's really easy to make a lot of the platforms. I'll tell you about a few platforms you can choose. Um, StreamYard, which I think you use, Belinda, right? StreamYard is one of my favorites and they give you a 30 second countdown timer when you, when you choose a StreamYard, when you have an account with them, even the free account. Um, but you can create in Canva a branded countdown timer that you put on and it has your colors and it has a fun, you know, the countdown timer. So that, that can add to your branding. The name of your show can be on it. Um, and that's what I use. I think that's a lot of fun. Um, so that's what we were talking about now um, is to choose a platform to go live. Like I said, you could just click to go live on your phone or on your computer, but then you don't have options like a countdown timer or, um, overlays or banners coming across. StreamYard, I find to be one of the most user-friendly platforms. Um, I have a link, and I don't know if anyone else has, I have links to all of these, actually, if you want. I can give you a, a link to all of my resources if you just want to um, have all of this in one list. Um, but StreamYard allows you to have a countdown timer. 
have an intro video. So what I will do is I have the timer goes down to zero. I start and I give about a minute kind of intro about what I'm about to say. And then I click a button and my seven second intro video comes in, which is like, okay, it's time to shine. Bloop. And then I come back and say, all right, welcome back. And we do our, our whole show. And then at the end, I click my outro video, which is kind of like, you know, thanks for joining. See you next week. Um, without a platform like StreamYard, it's hard to do that. I also, most of the time, will use what's called Ecamm, but it's only for Mac computers. Ecamm is, it has more functionality. There are more capabilities but it's a little more confusing. So it's a little more professional, but less user-friendly. So my suggestion, if you're getting started, is to start with something like StreamYard. Um, StreamYard is an online, uh, it's called a browser platform. So you have to go online, log into your account, and then from this online browser, it will go to where you tell it. You can connect to Facebook, LinkedIn, if you have LinkedIn Live, um, or YouTube. And um, the thing about Ecamm or other um, tools like that, um, I believe vMix is what most people will use if they don't have a Mac. It's vMix. Um, these are tools that you download to your computer rather than being browser-based. And they're, they're better quality when, when you send out a live from your um, tool that is kind of, it's a dedicated tool rather than you having to deal with the, the Wi-Fi and it being from the browser. It kind of becomes your own and it sends out a better quality video. For the most part, it's not a big deal. It's so small on, on a computer or on a phone that most people wouldn't notice. But when you're getting more professional, you get a more professional type of equipment. Um, so vMix or Ecamm would be the next level. Um, so let me get back to any questions. Okay, let's get back to Canva. Um, so the platform, so you're choosing a platform. When I got started, I went live only on Facebook. Um, and actually that's not true. When I got started, I went live only on Periscope. Periscope was like the first live streaming tool that I knew of. I went crazy on Periscope. And then it got very spammy. I, I would also I'll always feel like amazing. There's a few hundred people watching me. And then the comments would start coming in and I'd realize these are not my people. These are just weirdos saying mean things or weird things. So when I moved to Facebook, when Facebook came out with live, it was really exciting. There were less people watching, but higher quality. Now, um, being able to go live on YouTube is great. Being able to go live on LinkedIn is great. When you get started, choose one. I now will go live usually on all of the places because I'm comfortable gathering all of the comments and, and creating community from all the places into one. But I think when you're getting started, choose one platform and make it the one where most of your audience is hanging out and have that be, you also don't wanna divide up your audience. You wanna start really building and cultivating a community. So have them all come to one place. It could be your Facebook page. It could be a Facebook group. Um, it could be your Facebook profile. The thing with a profile is, as far as Facebook is concerned, you're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to promote a business, but if you're not promoting, it's a great place to do lives. Um, so you choose the platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, YouTube. Instagram is also great, but you're not allowed, according to Instagram, you're not allowed to go live using an external, a third-party tool on Instagram. So to go live on Instagram, you have to use your phone. And that's wonderful if that's your, your platform. Um, there are also ways to do fun things like have videos come in on Instagram live, but you have to do that all from your phone. Um, just a side note, there are tools out there that will let you live stream to Instagram from a third party tool, but they're not supported by Instagram. And I have heard of people who get their accounts blocked. So it's just a heads up. So Instagram, you're supposed to go live only from your phone. Um, uh, 
I do know some people who do a regular show on Instagram and that's where their audience is and they are doing really well. I love the other platforms because I love the external tools that allow me to do all the fun. Um, you could share your screen, you could put slides up, all the really fun things that if like uh, yesterday I was teaching how to create short form videos and I would put up a sample video, I would share something on my phone. I, you know, I could, I could have audio fun things pop up. I can have confetti go all over the screen. So it's really fun to use an external tool, which is why I like to go live on mostly on Facebook. Um, one thing that really made a huge difference in my video creation is having a dedicated space in my home. For a long time, I wanted to, even before live streaming, I wanted to create more video because I felt I learned that video was the way to connect with your potential audience. And I thought I want to do more of it, but I always had an excuse every time, even when an inspiration would hit me, like, I, I, okay, I, I, I want to create a video about this, or I want to go live to talk about this there was always a reason to not do it. Number one, where is that wire that connects my mic to my phone? Or where is good lighting? It's a bad time of day. The light, is, you know, the sun isn't coming in or it's coming in too strong. Or most often I can't find a space that's that I'm not embarrassed about. It's such a mess. Things are disorganized. My clothes are all, I couldn't find a space to do it in. When I created what I call a studio, but that's really a foo-foo word for a tiny corner of my basement. I now go live and do video almost every day because all of those excuses are gone. I walk into this space and I push a button. I have this little thing even in here where I just kind of go, okay, turn on my lights, push a button on my computer. The camera's attached. Everything, the, my, everything is here. I just walk into the space. I, I'm not embarrassed. If you look on this side of the camera, I would be embarrassed. Everything is a mess, but I have this nice little corner that I could just come into and at any moment and do a video and feel put together and professional. That is not to say that you shouldn't go live and be yourself. Um, I've heard it called life streams. And in order to support your consistent live stream of once a week, your show, it's great to pick up your phone and do a live stream and allow people to see behind the scenes and to see your mess and to see that you're not perfect. But when you do your consistent show, most of us want it to be like, we want to be prepared and we want to be ready. And creating this space in my home made a huge difference for me. It allowed me to never have those excuses again. Um, and so I, I have a whole another download that I can give you about like gives you all the resources for creating your own studio in your space. So feel I could give all at the end. I'll give all of these links for you if you're interested. Grab a backdrop on uh, on Amazon for twenty dollars even if you I, I've seen some um, lighting. I have a, a resource. The lighting that I have is um, and this is actually good to know if you don't know lighting. Um, a lot of people know about the ring light. And that's very popular and I have one, but I mostly don't use that in, I don't use it in my studio. What I use is what you see on the right here is two soft box lights that um, are angled at me at 45 degree angles. So I have one on this side of me, a little above my head that faces me 45 degrees and that casts a shadow over here. So there's another light on this side that takes away the shadow and the two of them give nice light on your face. They also, they, the experts, the lighting experts recommend what's called a hair light, which is a light that's kind of above and behind your head. So I chose a space in my basement where there's a a ceiling light and I sit kind of in front of it and I have these two box lights on me at 45 degrees and it feels like a like perfect lighting. Um, a ring light is great too, but that's mostly just to, to show off your face. Um, sometimes it's a little too bright, but, but it's also a very good option. Um, and I, I have the resources too where you can find all of these uh, tools and everything. The camera, uh, can be your phone. 
What I use right now, I'm on my computer on Zoom, so I'm not even using an external camera, but I use an external webcam, which I love because it was not expensive and it includes audio. So it's a camera slash microphone for about $60, I think. There are amazing cameras that are great for live streaming. They start at a few hundred dollars and go up to many, many thousands of dollars. I always assumed that I would upgrade from my external webcam, but for years, there really has been no need. Um, I feel like as a video expert and as a live streaming expert, when I teach it, I'm supposed to have that expensive camera. But I also love the fact that I don't, that I could tell you, you don't need it. You can grow your live streaming show. You can grow videos that reach millions of people. You can grow your business without expensive equipment. So, and, I, and I'm proof of that. So you don't need it, but you can always add some fun, expensive things if you love it, or there's a, something that you want to upgrade. Audio, like I said, my external webcam has the mic in it. You can use the mic in your computer, or you can get some kind of um, microphone that can attach like a USB mic that attaches right into your computer. Um, and audio is extremely important. So don't forget about it because uh, research in the, it shows that audio is actually 50% of a video, meaning that if someone is watching a video or scrolling through videos, if the audio is bad, they're not going to forgive that. Um, it, it's just as important as the video. So if you can't see it, people don't want to watch. But if they, but if it sounds bad, people also don't want to watch. It's just as important as, as, as the video. So audio and video are just as important. Um, types of shows. When you're getting started, I have always found that interviewing someone else is the most comfortable because you get to talk to someone. So right now I'm like looking at some faces. If I see you nodding or, or taking notes, I feel like, you know, we're having a conversation. When you're talking to a camera and it's just like, I now have to picture someone out there. And I do have a tip about what to do, how to feel better, but how, how weird is that? It's like the, the light goes on and we become different people. So when you interview someone else, and you can kind of look at their face and you're chatting with each other. So not only do you feel comfortable that you see someone listening to you, but you help each other come up with what to say next. So you never feel like you're going to run out of like, uh, what, where's my notes? What do I say? You're having a conversation. So an interview is a great way to do a show. A demo, always terrific if you teach things like how, how to's. Um, and tutorial is really a how-to, but a demo is like showing, what is the difference? Can anyone explain the difference between a demo? Like this is it, watching me do something rather than a how-to is more of a demo. Like I'm going to show you how I created my website. Um, a tutorial is more of how-to, what are the steps to create a website? Education is probably mixes all of, we most of us do education when we're doing our shows. Um, entertainment is why we all stop the scroll. Even though we want to get value, entertainment is bottom line what we want. So even if you're doing an interview or you're giving a tutorial, you're teaching something, if you can make it entertaining at the same time, that's the best thing to do out there. But there are also people who have shows who are um, just doing entertainment. They're coming on and they're singing or they're juggling or they're doing magic. Um, so let me just see, let me just stop here. Um, I just see some things in the chat. Definitely use not having the right space as an excuse. Exactly, Lisa, that's what I have done. <laughs> Any thoughts or questions up to now? Who here is ready to start their own show? I have more to tell you, but if you're ready to start. Nobody's ready to start their show. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. <laughs> this is really great. I, I mean, I've been doing a live show for two years and I just took a lot of notes uh, about how I want to take it to the next step. Cause I never really thought of it as this is going to sound so silly, 
but you know, my coach said, do, you know, do a live show. It's called the rocket girl show, but I never thought of it like as a show, like Oprah, that was really like a light bulb moment for me. I never thought of myself as the host of the rocket girl show. And there's yeah. a way to create celebrity around that. I just thought of it as like this video I do every Thursday, you know? Wow. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for saying that. I think that's a really cool mindset shift. I think it's huge, actually, because even when I'm, you know, pitching podcasts and stuff, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm the host of the Rocket Girl show, as opposed to I do these little videos on Thursdays and I have to run around, and brush my hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you were ho the host of a weekly show. Right, right. I, I wasn't thinking of it like that. So that was that. Now I want to look at the, everything again, like, oh, well, now that I'm a host of a show, how, you know, how am I going to promote that differently? How am I, you know, uh, you know, how am I, I love, I wrote down the countdown timer. I don't have an outro and I would love that because I always feel so awkward at the end. And so now I don't yes. have to, um, yeah, lots of notes. So cool. Yeah. So the outro, you're right. The end still after years of doing shows at the end, I kind of always go, Okay, so, so the, and that's a good tip also for all of us to remember. Um, I personally don't like the idea of having a script and reading a script for a show, um, but it is nice to have your, la your outro sentence written somewhere so that at any point when it's time to end, you can go, okay, so thanks for joining me. I hope to see you next Friday at noon. Don't forget to shine on a, like I'll, I'll know my outro. So it isn't because we always will go to, okay, um, thanks. See, I guess mm -hmm. that's all. So you say your last sentence, you push the button and the outro video comes in and you, and you unbroadcast. <laughs> so I it's a great thing, thing every time, just for that reason. I always say mm -hmm. this is Wanda Sandor. That's where I get stuck. Um, also known as Rocket Girl. See you next, you know, see you next week. Bye-bye. You know, and mm -hmm. kind of fun. I, I kind of get into a character that helps me to be playing someone, not, mm -hmm. not to make it fake, but to make it, I'm kind of not, I'm an introvert. I have to really shift to do this. Um, yeah. And, and me too. And so actually, let me go get those, I'll go skip to like, ideas for feeling more comfortable, because I think um, there are a lot of pe people who say that they're introverts, but still want to do this. Um, so let me, let me put that slide up, but let me just see. So BJ said, I've been doing a podcast for four years. This is my next step. So excellent BJ. So you're already doing audio, right? Um, and you're, oh, so there you are. See, you were on audio only, but now, now I see your face. <laughs> you know what else, Nika? I, I, um, started a test Facebook group and practice streaming in there because I was, I mean, I can't even tell you how scared I was and how much I didn't want to do this. And my lighting was bad, like all the things. And then I bought the stuff. I didn't set it up for two months. I left it in the basement on the floor and stepped over it. But, you know, my coach kept saying to me who I was paying a lot of money, this is going to make a difference. Get over it, do it, you know, and you pay someone to tell you that, and then you don't do it, you know, what the heck? So that's yeah. why I, um, yeah. So yeah, my secret testing group, Diane says, save me from panic attacks. Yeah. 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 And that's, what's great about StreamYard also is that you can connect you. So you, a test Facebook group that no one is in, or maybe a friend who you could say, could you come watch this and tell me what you see if I'm doing something wrong or if you don't hear me? So it's a test group that's private that no one knows about, but you and whoever you tell, and you connect that to StreamYard and you click to only go live there. And then you can go back and watch it and see what to do to improve. My suggestion though, is don't do that for too long. Right. Because again, we're going to get into, I'm not ready yet. And here's the thing that I, al I always say, I wish this wasn't true, but the only way to be more ready is to do it not ready. That's the only, like we're waiting to be ready to go live. And the only way to get more ready to go live is to go live when you're not ready. I hate that. I wish it wasn't true, but it's true. <laughs> so go live. Don't be perfect. We're not, we can't be perfect. So go live and be imperfect and then get better. That's the only way to get better. Um, so let me, uh, any other questions? I'm going to share a screen if there are no I other. I actually have a question, Nika. Um, and I might show some ignorance here, but what is the difference um, between having, going live streaming 
and having a YouTube channel where you, I think you're recording and you're just posting. So it's not necessarily live. I don't know the difference and I don't know if there are any benefits to having like a, a YouTube channel too or what? Yeah. And that's not ignorant at all. First of all, YouTube now has the ability to go live, but they didn't. That's fairly new in the, in the course of street of social media. Um, but a YouTube channel is great to keep recorded videos and to build awareness. And, and there are things to do to build a YouTube channel to gain awareness and have people know you, love you and trust you because you come out with good content. Um, and until live streaming and still now, people who are building their YouTube channels will generally upload a recorded video at the same time every week because that does get people to like know to go look for it. But when it is live, people are supposed to show up at that time. So if you're, I know there are lots of makeup tutorialists that I follow and they'll upload, let's say Thursday mornings. And I don't care when, I just know that at Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or Monday or Tuesday or next month, they have a new video. And I'm gonna, I'm excited like Thursday night, I go, did they put out a new video? Let me go look. But if they have a live show, I have to show up at Thursday at one o'clock to see it. Now, you can keep it then as a recording afterwards, just like our live streams on Facebook. We go live and then it is kept up as a recording, but there's no interaction. So the live stream, really the big difference, there's, there are a few differences, but the big difference is if you show up live, we can have a conversation. There's interaction. So right now I could just, I could have just showed you, I have a 20 minute video on how to start a live streaming show. I could have just said, instead of showing up, I'm just going to play that. But then there's none of this. Like you just had a question. You'd have to, you know, hope that someone answers it later. Um, it also, there's nothing more that builds a, a stronger connection to someone and feeling like you got to know them than live. So I remember, you know, when social media started with just text, then pictures were allowed on posts. And we would all say like, you can't do any better than a picture. People need to see your face to really know who you are. Then video, and all of us were like, well, you have to do video because now you can't like airbrush the wrinkles. I mean, you might be able to, but you're, but now people are hearing your voice. So they really are getting to know you. Like you could really get someone's aura by watching their video. But then live streaming came out and it was like, you cannot get more raw and authentic because I can't edit out the, <coughs> uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. That's what I did. I can't edit it out. I just did it. I made a mistake and you all watched. And so that's number one, people love to get people, people may hate you. It's true. That's always been true, but they were never going to be someone who was going to like you. And when, the more real you are, the more your people really fall in love with you. And it's just, it's just like the absolute way to make connection with people. Then you can put it up as a recording or you can edit it to be a recording, a shorter recording with just the, the valuable parts and edit out the interaction. Sometimes it's not fun to watch other people interact with each other. So for a recorded video, you may want to just have the valuable parts. Um, when live streaming came out, that was another thing that helped me do video more often because one of the things that stopped me, one of my excuses was I would create the video and it wouldn't be ready. So I would never put it out because I had to edit it. Now that live streaming's out, I have this idea. I put it out. It's too late. It's out. <laughs> like there's no editing. It just got out. So no matter what, something's going out because I just set it out there. So, uh, so that's what live streaming, there's so many great benefits of live streaming. And people love to join in and like ask questions and be part of it. Um, Thank you. Sure. So here are three of my favorite tips for feeling more confident and comfortable on camera. One is the countdown timer. It really helps me be ready. It's kind of like accountability like I said, like, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm ready, but once the countdown timer goes to zero, I am on. 
So it also is sometimes when we're going live, we feel that um, I, I, I'm still kind of insecure. Can people hear me? Is anyone on? So in the beginning, we're often like, hi, anyone there? Can you hear me? Can you give, can you tell me if you can hear me? If you could see my screen? How many videos have, I mean, how many live streams have you seen that start that way? I mean, almost all of them still start that way. Hi, can you guys hear me? Let me know. Um, you don't have to do that because you, during your countdown timer, you can go on a, a different tab or on your phone and see for yourself that you are live and the sound is on. And now you don't, because it, it, it looks uncomfortable and less professional to start with that rather than welcome back to the Rocker Girl Show. Today, we're going to talk about like, that's so much more powerful. So the countdown timer helps you get past that insecurity. And by the way, when you go live, if you ever do, and we did, we did it here on the Zoom because this was not a live stream, but if you go live and you go, okay, I'm just going to wait a minute until people show up and you're kind of looking, yeah, is anyone here yet? All right, I'm not going to deliver my content until a few more people show up. What that does is, number one, if anyone is there, they feel disrespected. Like, I am here watching you. What do you mean you're going to wait for other people to show up? I'm probably, what am I sticking around for? I'm here to listen to content, start the content. That's the first thing. The second thing is this now becomes a recorded video. And part of what gets videos seen and by and a higher reach, reaching more people so that more people have the chance to see your video is the first second of your video. And I have learned it's not the first second of your video, it's the first slide of your video. It's even less than a second because we're scrolling and we don't even give things a second before we decide if we're gonna stop on it. So if the first slide of your video is you going, I'm gonna wait, it, I mean, we're, we're way past the first slide already. <laughs> so you start your video and you start as if it's like, again, let's talk about Oprah. Oprah didn't come in and say, okay, welcome everyone. I don't see a lot of people are still filing in. Let's see if anyone else shows up. No, it's welcome to the Oprah show. Here's our content. Um, so start your show powerfully as soon as the countdown timer goes to zero. Now, if you're doing this on your Facebook page, when you're done and it becomes a recording, you can go back and cut out the countdown timer. So now your recording starts with welcome back everyone. Um, and now people are not seeing some, they're scrolling and they're seeing the pow as the video starts. Um, okay, so the second thing is uh, when I, my background is in like entertainment and acting and singing. And I, so there was always a script that I would have to memorize. And then as I got older, and especially since I've gone through chemo, I cannot memorize much at all anymore. <laughs> so, so I would want, I always thought I should have a script for videos. And it was always when I would try to look at the script or try to memorize it, you know, I thought, well, I, I can perform so I could sound like I'm not reading a script, but it was never comfortable. It was never confident sounding. If you are going live with any topic, if you're doing a video on any topic, it's something you know. You're not going to do a show about something you don't know. So we do, we do want to have things to remember because even if I know, I could tell you without this script here, I could tell you how to do a live show, how to start a live show. But at a point, I'm going to go, what was the next thing I wanted to tell you? So bullet points are amazing because they, re they remind you. And I will often just have it uh, like here is one of my shows. Like I have bullet points and sometimes I'll write notes next to it. This was a very long webinar I was doing. Usually it's three bullet points that I print out. And so I'm talking. And then if I get to, okay, the second thing I wanted to tell you is what was it? Oh, yeah. There's nothing wrong. In fact, it looks confident if you stop and you say, let me look at my notes instead of what I used to think we had to do, which was, and then number two, the thing that I wanted to tell you next was to, to talk because it, it like, I don't want anyone to know I'm, I'm looking at my notes. I'm pretending I'm not reading it. That doesn't look confident. <laughs> 
there's nothing wrong with having notes. Speakers have notes and they don't hide their note cards. They look down at their note cards. So have, if you need your intro written out, because that's where we kind of, the countdown timer goes to zero. There have been times when the countdown timer has gone to zero and, and I look at the camera and I see that I'm on and I go, I had something really cool prepared to tell you and I have no idea what it was. So now I remember to write down a sentence to remind me what my intro is. <laughs> because this happened actually once a few months ago, because I was so prepared all night long. I kept waking up and thinking of this great intro. I was so proud of it. So I didn't write it down. <laughs> I just had my bullet points. And I was like, I, I saw it like going, like the timer was three, two. And I started going, oh my God, what? And it went on and I went, I had <laughs> something prepared. So instead, let's put on the intro video and get started. I had no idea what it was. I never again didn't write down my intro sentence <laughs> because there's the, as the timer's going down, I could easily look down and go, oh yeah, here's, my, here's what I wanted to say. Start my intro video. And now I have my notes. Nothing wrong with looking at my notes. Um, so that's- Yes. What about, how do you, I always use slides because I have my bullets on the slide so I can look straight ahead. Is that okay? It is, but let's just, I personally think like we're on Zoom now. So right now I feel like this is so much more intimate talking to you without a slide here, because mm -hmm. first of all, we got tinier when the slide comes up and I don't know. I just feel like um, it's less formal. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think that sometimes people are so focused on the slide when really you want them focused on you. Mm -hmm. So I like a mix. I definitely do slides in some of my live streams, but I also do like to go back and forth. Like I'll come back and say, well, are there any questions on that? And okay. I'll read a question and we'll talk this way mm -hmm. so that people, as I'm talking about a topic, a side topic, they're not still focused on the slide. That's what I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's really good. I was, so this is just like really eye opening. The main reason I was doing that, well, first of all, I was scared to death. And if I had a slide, then I wouldn't be. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. The other thing is, I was, um, I didn't have LinkedIn Live. So I was posting the video to LinkedIn. So I had to keep it under 10 minutes, but mm -hmm. I just got approved for LinkedIn Live. So now, is, is there a limit? I don't think there is. I don't well, think there's a limit on live. I haven't yeah. reached it. <laughs> yeah, I'll look it up, but I don't think there is. Yeah, I mean, there I may be like 60 minutes, but it's not something that you probably right. would run into. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and I just, I'm sorry, I see that the time is getting, I just, so what last point I wanted to make to everyone on, on being confident, this is something that totally helps me. First of all, you're looking at the camera rather than looking at, so I'm here on Zoom, we look at each other. So oftentimes we, we if, if I look at Diane, I see that she's looking down, not at the camera because she's looking at this and Belinda's looking at the, we're all looking at the screen here. Kristen's looking at this, I'm looking at all of you looking at the screen. When we're delivering a live stream and it's our show, like look at the difference, Am I, I'm looking at you rather than looking down here. Cause this is not, I, how can I connect with you if I'm talking like this? And a lot of us are looking at our confidence monitor. Like we see ourselves and we're looking at ourselves. We need to get used to looking at who we're talking to. And when we do that, because now we can't see ourselves and we can't see who we're talking to. What helps me is to think of one person, not just it, it is better to say, hi, I'm talking to you rather than, hey, all of you, do you all, because it's, we don't connect with a person if we're talking to all. So if I talk to you instead of everyone out there, I'm talking to you, just, just you. But I actually am talking to one person and you probably know who you are. It, it, if you think it's you, it actually is you. I'm talking to you. <laughs> like I'm actually thinking of a person in my mind and it is for me, it's, and it can be different people depending on the topic you're giving, but I often think about one of my clients who I know whenever I talk to her, like on Zoom or in person, she's smiling and nodding and she loves the information I give. She's like one of my favorite clients. She loves me. I love her. So if I'm talking to her, I can picture her understanding what I'm saying and nodding her head and smiling. So I'm talking to her. Um, that's who you want to talk to. You want to talk to your favorite person as you're talking. So I hope that that helps. Um, and I think, yeah, I have, I have so many more notes, but I'm, I'm happy to end unless anyone has any questions.
Awesome. Awesome. And, and tag me in your new shows just so I could come support you and watch your show. Are there any questions at all? Anything? I know we've been asking questions along the way. Um, and I also put, I put a couple of links. I put um, Nika's shine365.com and string bank media. So you can see that there. Oh, we're getting some applause from Susan. Applause from everybody. Hey, Nika, oh. tell us about your, um, you, you have, a, you have a, a membership group, right? That people can learn how to get better at that. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks. I actually have, I launched this week a, a five-day boot camp to teach people how to create viral video, viral type short form content videos. Um, you can feel free to join for the last two days if you'd like. Um, but what's interesting, I was thinking about what I would tell you about today. Tomorrow I am relaunching my Shine membership. It's, it's including a lot more. It's including um, weekly coaching with me, plus help with your videos, plus post templates so that you never again wonder what to say on social media and, and what video scripts to use. So you you get templates every month, fresh new templates um, and master classes. So it's really how to grow your presence online. And I know it's, it's certainly not for everyone, but if you are looking to have a platform that really shares your unique voice, then the Shine membership is something that may be interesting to you. Um, relaunching tomorrow at the end of my boot camp for new pricing and everything, like it's going up. So I thought that if anyone was interested, I made a little sneak link to get the old pricing. <laughs> so if anyone does want to get in before I actually launch the bigger program tomorrow, you still will get everything that I'm adding tomorrow. Um, but if it does sound interesting to you, um, the sales page isn't even done yet, but it's including everything I just said to you and feel free to reach out. But I made a little link. It's nika.live slash sneak, the word sneak, in case you wanted to sneak in <laughs> at the old pricing. So say that again, nika.live. Nika.live slash sneak. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thanks. All right, I'm going to put it in the chat. I'm going to put it in with the... Oh, yeah. So that's the longer link. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. So and tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow we're launching with um, with extra stuff and more access to to support. So that will all be included for everyone who's in the membership. Um, yeah. And and if you're doing a live stream, like I said, please let me know, because I, I do love to come on live streams and, and support whoever is doing that. What is um what is everyone's topics? I, that I actually wish I knew. I'd, if anyone wants to put in the chat, I'd love to hear what your topics are. Like, what is it that you teach? What's your expertise? Yeah, everybody share either in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, you could just jump in. At um, our small business podcast, we do marketing and then also um, executive coaching issues things oh. that pop up and we just did our halloween show and it was very ridiculous awesome. I can't wait and we've been dying to do you know be live the issue has been that we're in two different locations now because of the whole pandemic and everything so i'm sure it's workable i'm sure it's easy to figure out oh um, it's a button bj it's a button yeah right yeah. right yeah, you can. Yeah, like, yard's so easy to just have two people in different locations. Yeah, yeah. super simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm more comfortable with it. There's somebody else, I'm not going to name names, who's not comfortable with it. <laughs> My other co host. So <laughs> it's just a process of trying to bring him around to, yeah, yeah we can do it. Mm -hmm. So, though, you know. That's where we are. <laughs> okay. Some, some enrolling, some convincing, but yeah, exactly. you literally you give them a link, they click the link, you, cl you click on their face and the screen splits and you're there. Like that's awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. I yeah. love your, yeah. I love your idea of having a couple of run throughs on a private grouping because there's just that ability to uh, get over your jitter, position yeah. your face correctly. Mm -hmm. you know, all those little things that you bump into. So yeah. great suggestion. And then just pop out and get into, get into it. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I just don't have stay to, too long there. Yeah. And, and I would have to say that we've learned so much just by doing mm -hmm. you after, you know, 214 of these, wow. you really get the hang of it. You get the hang of it. I can imagine. So, exactly. So it should be fun. Thanks for all your encouragement though. I love it. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. I think if that's it, thank you so much. I so, I really, really appreciate you inviting me, Belinda and Lisa. I, I'm, I'm honored and thank you. One of our favorite uh, people. Was, oh, yes, <laughs> we were so excited. It was a no brainer to ask you if you could come. And when you said yes, we were like, yay. Oh, so thank I you. Know. Very happy. Oh, we always learn from you. Um, you know, even Belinda, who's got her own live show, now has like more things to do in this paradigm shift. So mm -hmm. it's awesome. cool. very exciting for sure. Oh, we appreciate it. So I encourage everybody to take a look at the sneak peek that Mika offered because it's, you know, huge value, absolutely huge value, so much support. If you were here, obviously you want to start a live show or, you know, start getting into recording. So I would say absolutely do that. Absolutely do that. Um, I think we have time do we um, for one breakout group. Um, so let's do a little networking. We are 14 people. Um, so do we want to break into groups of um, four and five? Yes. Does that feel like too many? Four and five? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can do four and five or we can do three to four. I, yeah. Everyone always runs out of time. So why don't we do three to four? Okay, and let's do 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Um, before we break out, in case anybody has to leave early, I just wanna remind you that, uh, let me look at my notes. Um, our next meeting is November, uh, what did I say it was? November 18th. Um, so we hope that you join us there. We'd love to see you there. So, and thank you all for coming today, but we're not quite done. We're gonna break out a little bit. Um, if you are in a room where you already know everybody, um, maybe one of the prompts could be, what are you excited to implement? What is something that Nika shared that you thought, I could do that, I could do that. So um, that would be a great thing to start to talk about and get your um, enthusiasm going and you know commit to, to commit to the little group like I'm going to try this thing. So um, we'll go from there. So we'll we'll do ten minutes and then we'll come back into the big group and wrap up. Okay, awesome. Here we go. Seatbelts. Seatbelts. <laughs> well, you know it's like a time warp. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. You're just fine. I was in a Zoom meeting. Thankfully, it started at 12. So I, it's. Okay. Nice. Where's Belinda? We lost Belinda. I'm here. Went down the bottom. All right. <laughs> I want to wrap up by saying thank you to Nika for joining us, for giving us the time, for sharing all of your, you know, your great wisdom, sharing your resources with us. We really appreciate that. We're going to put all of that into with this recording in the member vault too. So the members who weren't able to be here today can check it out, check out your stuff. Um, and thank you to everybody who made the time to join us today too, um, especially if you haven't been here in a while or you're new, you know, we really appreciate seeing you. And of course, to our members, you are the backbone of our group. You are the reason we exist and we are so happy to see you as well. So we look forward to seeing you um, in November. Um, I guess we can say happy Halloween. We can say happy almost Thanksgiving and we'll look forward to seeing you in just about a month, okay? Bye everybody. Thank you, Nico. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yep. Hi.